Hi, my name is Cole Dempsey, and I'm here with Hannah Elif Dempsey. I am the director, producer, writer, blah, 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 for Glimpse, the short film. And my wife, Hannah Elif Dempsey, is the art director. And I thought it'd just be fun for both of us to get together and uh, do this little commentary. First of all, I want to say my beautiful, lovely wife uh, redesigned my late logo. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. So right here we have um, uh, had a little bit of issues with lighting um, because it was such a wide shot um, and I, uh, I had troubles with the natural light and I didn't have that much light to be able to light it like I really wanted to. Uh, so unfortunately did get a little bit of grain uh, in there, a little bit of noise. So right here, I just kind of put myself over in the corner to show uh, how small my character was. Right here, his, uh, he's just, he's a daydreamer. So his, his worst fear is growing old alone. And I just kind of wanted to, to show that. Um, there, there you are. Hey. Now this music right here, I I I had a, uh, originally a different song, and it made, gave it kind of a campy feel, um, which I, I didn't like at, at first. So I wanted something a little bit sweeter that changed from the initial the initial song that the that just kind of shows how just how sad he is alone, and this this whole film is mostly music driven and I searched for hours on finding the right songs to come in played around with some different songs and this is the one for yeah this is the first time he sees your character and so I wanted something to really capture the expression on his face and by the way this this is not you know you know we have coffee here but this is not an actual coffee shop like what we originally found uh, wanted to find Every coffee right. shop had issues. Right. Yep. And because er, because there were so many people that were in the coffee shop every morning uh, and we would have to find certain times during the day. And if there was someone in it that didn't want to be filmed, we were going to have to give their permission or we couldn't film that person and that could throw off everything. And I just saw a lot of problems with it. So uh, I just went around... Uh, <clears throat> An, a, a, um, an outlet mall and I found this bar uh, called Bar Louis. it's in uh, Garland, Texas and they're like, yeah, come on in you know, just you know, come in before we open and and um, yeah, that's fine so that's where I got uh, this place and it was, it was wonderful there was, there was no one in it but I you know, if you listen closely you hear some ambient noises of of a restaurant for a track that I laid in and uh, we had to cut out all of the the noise because we, we were literally sitting right on the other side of the kitchen and they were running the the dishwasher and it was extremely loud and so all the sound that you hear from the restaurant is nothing is none of what we recorded in the restaurant or the the, the bar actually so, by the way, you look beautiful there. Oh, so. thank you. And I just think the coffee, I just want to add that I think that whole bar is an excellent idea for a coffee shop because, like you said, we had, it was impossible to find a coffee shop that wasn't full all the time. And we needed to film in the morning or early in the day. And so, what for better our place schedule. for our schedule and, you know, for the outside? And what better place but a bar? That it's empty in the morning. Unless so. you get the occasional lush, right? That kind of, <laughs> <laughs> there always is. Up. You know, I, I, was, I was I wanted you know beer by the time we were done with this. In fact, I, I did. I had a martini oh, uh, right after did. I did. Yeah. After, after you know, after I came back and uh, got the signature because I you know 
you know, telltale. So you were that guy that was there. I was that guy. (laughs) Yeah. So I was, there was a few other people there by that time, but anyway, uh, so, so yeah. And as you can see this part right here, this book that she's opening up, that's kind of a creepy stare. I have to admit that's, that's a little bit of a creep stare, (laughs) but so that, that book right there, Coil of Worlds, um, let me go to it. Oh, we're going to, we're going to daydream. That's the, Cause that's what you do as a daydreamer. Uh-huh. I try to figure out how, how can I progress these daydreams along, but not be overly creepy. And oh, there you, there you go. I'll have to come back to the book later, but I try not to move on in on the cup too much. Uh, when, uh, when it was showing the empty booth, I just felt like it gave a little bit more emotion. I think you can get carried away with too much dynamic movement, but I did, and I did for a little bit. Uh, and so I changed a lot of the dynamic shots into more static shots. Um, yeah. I, I know Kira Kurosawa, who's now one of my favorite producer and directors, if not my favorite, um, he always has something moving. And so I, I wish I, and I, and I love it. His, his films really, uh, there's always something, every shot is interesting. So, so there's the book I was talking about coil of worlds. Uh, that is my sister's book, uh, that she wrote first in a trilogy. She's actually almost done with a third trilogy. Uh, I actually designed that book cover, not as well as you would have, I'm sure. <laughs> and, Actually, my wife harassed me slightly for the font choices because she is a graphic designer and a wonderful, talented graphic designer at that. And she is bigger nerd than I am because she knows the histories of fonts and when you use them and when you don't use them. And apparently Papyrus, which I used, (laughs) is way overdone. And so she kind of harassed me. Uh, about that and right rightfully so but you know um shameless plug for my sister there cinna mclaughlin uh, you can pick up that book on amazon so uh but I, i'm really appreciative of her letting us uh use it in fact we we used it and then it was like oh crud we probably need to go ask her permission and then right. she's like oh yeah sure free publicity why not so anyway And that my choice in my choice in outfits here was just I want something a little dull. If you notice, you know the greenery is very very green, except my shirt. And if you notice right here, you'll see the color of the surrounding that the grass gets darker when you disappear mm-hmm. or when your character disappears. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I, it's I know it's subtle. very very subtle. All right. But you helped me with figure out the wardrobes. Which, I mean, I try to do stuff that's a little bit more earth tone and you something brighter to show right. the, the, the difference in the two characters. He's kind of blah and you're not blah. I mean, look at you. <laughs> Another creepy stare right there. Oh, well, you, you caught that. Creepy and you're, stares mm, back. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> By the way, this is not a plug for HP. Oh, oh, look, you just do the creepy stare. I know. Which I changed. I had to change that shot around because I that shot I had after this part right here where I was looking up and then looking down and I had it to where you were doing that when I looked down right before I went into the dream sequence again. Um, and it just... It, <sighs> the face from earlier didn't make a lot of sense when that, that first, like that realization of, Oh, I, you know, she kind of, kind of likes me. And so, right. She just looks at me, but so I I just kind of changed it around. Um, and just cause it just, it just made more sense. It just flowed the facial expressions, which try to look as awkward as possible. And now you just kind of, swallowed me whole right there it, it was, that was that was a great moment i think we practiced that a few times on we purpose did, uh, that was my fault on purpose yeah 
Now this part was this part was great when we were doing this. There were there was a table of teenagers actually sitting on right on the other side of the camera that actually thought that I proposed to to you. You remember that? And they were all oh yeah, so that's so awesome. We're like, um, well, actually, we're we're already married. We're doing a film. They're like, oh, that's, that's good. So I, I think it speaks to our acting it's abilities. Right. You know, I love that scene right there. I love that uh -huh. shot. Just every every day, and, and it kind of I, I just I wanted it to to ratchet ratchet up on the 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 daydreams one because I, I'm I'm having to tell this major story in just. A few short minutes it was supposed to be between three to six minutes i i i wanted to do it in 10 minutes had approval to do a little bit longer but um you know there i'm sure you know he he lives vicariously through these daydreams he just doesn't get out and do anything and so in order for me to show this story and that's playing on in his head i had to really kind of ratchet up each each one so right here you know he sees her a second time and he you know he's proposing to her in his mind which you know i'm sure women don't actually understand that men do this for for reals um that's you know a little known fact that women probably don't want to know what goes on inside the mind of a man <laughs> especially one that looks at her creepy and <laughs> right. in a bar All so right. and okay well i'm still doing the dynamic shot but um i didn't i originally was flipping was back fine. and forth it didn't feel too much it didn't feel too much yeah and and um and so but this time i only went to the cup once instead okay, of going twice because you have a special effect in each one of these where I disappear. Right. And how, do you want to explain how that works? Yeah. So the first one um, where, where, you know, the, the, the daydreamer and the woman were walking. Um, I actually picked a different location for, for us to do that. However, I, we found that, that spot and it was wound up being better than the one that we originally went out to look for um when we went out uh, location scouting out in that in that uh, natural preserve and this is a natural preserve this beautiful area is right in the middle of garland um uh, no no not the middle yeah but it's it's just it's kind of hidden and uh you can't when you're walking in there you cannot tell that you are right in the middle of uh, the, city. the city of Garland. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very beautiful. We did it at a perfect time too, because the grass was not too high. You know, what did you say? Like two weeks after that, it was like chest high. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. It was yeah, it was up to my chest, so it would have covered us completely, or at least me. <laughs> right, and it and, and it gets hot out here in, in in Dallas area, and so and the temperature wasn't too hot. It was perfect for. For this, this was a kind of a difficult shot. The, the first one was not a difficult shot. What I did was I walked, you and I walked past the tree. I, I stopped and I backed up a little bit and had, you know, had my wife run behind the camera out of the way. And then I shot me walking past the tree a second time mm -hmm. alone. And then I, what I did was I, I cut, uh, I, I kind of overlapped uh, and cropped the picture um, over top of, the, of you and I walking past the tree and I cropped it to that tree and then um, the the layer underneath was just me the part of me walking past the tree alone mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> the whole tripping over the the root thing was kind of a last second Thing. And, right. and you thought I actually did it. I thought you, it was an accident. You thought it was an accident. I actually, yeah, I'm such so a good actor. I, I just did it. And you, you were like, up. oh my gosh, did you do that? You know, did, was that an accident? I was like, no, did that look good? So anyway, um, so right here, this one was a lot more difficult. And I had I 
it not been kind of so far away from where we had to park the car, I would have brought out, and there was just you, me, and my my nine year old daughter, uh-huh. um, Eden, and I would have brought a green screen out and had you know so that way the lighting would have been perfect, and I could have just had you walking back to the tree, and then um, I could have just. Uh, cropped just those parts and taken the, the 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 key out the green screen but i didn't do that and i was like oh well you know it's not going to be a problem i can i can still remove you it wound up being really really difficult and i had to do this in in several increments and i i still cropped just barely around you and i and i for for whatever reason i was not able to figure out how to um crop just around your body i tried the you know tried to do like an oval crop and i wound up staying with a, a rectangular crop which i i think if i would have uh, been able to figure out in time how to crop around your character better it would have looked a little better uh, i know i've gotten a lot of good feedback on this that this was this was okay i don't know if people just being polite or or what but you still can kind of tell it's kind of a harsh line there, but I had to, I had to really do this in little pieces and, um, kind of track it through and, uh, pretty much crop just you every single frame, which was very tedious. Um, but I started this, right after we filmed this which i didn't have to turn in this assignment uh do the first edit for a couple months after we shot this but i was really kind of excited about it and i I did it anyway and i'm glad i did uh so it, it doesn't look too bad it's all emotionally gets me and here's here's my daughter coming and it was it, you just happened to have her stop right there perfectly. Right, I did because I was standing down and there. I, remember, and I, as she walked up, I'd say, "Okay, stop now, shake your head now, keep going." So she stopped where it was right there under your arm. Right, and it, which was perfect framing. This right here was kind of a kind of an, an accident. accident. Yeah, I just looked, looked back. We both looked at each other yeah. at the same time. It was this perfect awkward moment. So, right here. He now he's reading a book, and I just I was trying to figure out like what kind of book could I get that was that would be the most awkward. You know, he's 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 trying to impress this girl by because he's reading a book that just happens to be how to win friends and influence people, which is just <laughs> it's about as awkward of a book as you can get to impress a girl. And there you are again. So and you know I I, I chose this shirt because I I wanted to be a little bit brighter. Um. It's progressing. Yours, yours is not as bright, but it's still the color that you chose worked perfectly because you really stand out. And yeah, there you are. Now you're giving him the creepy stare, which I is know. You know, which is what I wanted. I try to figure out every possible way to be, to be awkward. awkward. <laughs> I know, <laughs> hiding behind the bus. And I found that matching the, the, the movement to the music wasn't as difficult a task as I thought it would be. Like, if you just played music, any music, to an action scene in a movie, it's naturally going to match up in, in kind of a lot of different ways. I love this. This is one of my favorite scenes right here. This is at uh, my, uh, my brother and sister-in-law's house, and that is their baby. Right. Uh, but in my imagination, or I, not well, not mine, his imagination, his creepy imagination, you know, they made a baby. <laughs> right. and that's not creepy <laughs> at all. I just I just want to throw that out there. This is very normal hey, for a man. This is a PG movie. This is a PG. You did so you, you know did just good. the baby poofed. <laughs> it was actually delivered by a stork. That's right. Um. Which you know it, it's you know which we ordered on Amazon, mm-hmm. um, and it was stork delivered, which I support over drone delivery. So go. Amazon, if you're listening, stork deliveries are the way to go. But th- that smile right there just 
kills me every time I see oh, this. Such a cute. I know he he did really good. Yeah. This one. At first, he, he he did he didn't want to lay on his back. He kept trying to roll over. Um, but when you started playing with his nose, he just he became mesmerized. He, he got yeah, that and it was uh, that just did it for him. And it, it, just it just ended made up being really shot. cute. Just you know. Yeah, yeah, it did. It was really it's just beautiful. I don't think we could have gotten a cuter baby. Oh, I know. Right here again. Just I, I wanted to show how awkward. Yeah, right. Everyone, he, you he have something is. awkward. Something. Everything does. is is awkward. Everything is awkward. Now this is my friend Rocky, which I've done a lot of work with in the past. He's a he's a director and actor as well. And <laughs> that that look right there was oh, just it's perfect. It, he just it was just all improv. Right, because we put him in. And, and really he at the last he, he laughed right after that. And we had to, so, and then he did this. He was just, so he's good. such a brilliant actor. I, I love it. Uh, and we we almost had to cut that out if you remember, because we uh, we did, it was just you and me. Right. We didn't know he was coming, and yeah, we didn't know we, if he could we, come. We had to change that. Well, we didn't have some guy. That's right. And then at the last minute, he showed up, and then we thought, oh, we can throw him in. Yeah. Or that like was, you were gonna get a phone call. Right. Yeah, right. So yeah. in the script, I wrote that someone else was going to be sitting there, but because we, we didn't know if we were going to have anyone, we had to yeah. change it the last and minute. It. And then here he shows up. He shows so. up, and so we could stick to the script, and it just worked out beautifully. Worked out. Yeah, it was perfect. Oh, this, this part just... And then here you have this other scene where you do right. the same thing. Right, so right here perfect. what I did is I just froze. I just froze, and then I had we. Did, did you get out first? I think you got out I, well, first. Well, they pulled the baby out. Pulled and the I baby got out, out together, first, and then yeah. you got out, and you straightened the the bed. Which actually, the way I was concerned with when you straighten out the sheet, that it was not going to, it was going to look the same. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was perfect. We it just looking perfect. I think I just slid out. I think I slid out. We kept the sheets the same. They pulled the baby out. I slid out. Right, and so it was, it was, I and I because I I stayed still, and I had the camera up on a jib crane, looking straight down uh, over the bed, and because I was able to, you know, because I just froze, I was able to cut this this scene into two different parts, which worked just perfectly. And again, I I darkened the scene again as soon as. As your character leaves, because uh -huh. uh -huh. just because uh, I just felt that that just showed a little bit more, just drove the point of hopelessness home. But I tried to make it as subtle as as possible. Yeah, that's good. And I like the subtle ambient noise. It's just yeah. you hear a little bit of restaurant. It's not too much, but it's just enough. Now, ideally. You, you would just, want to record the ambient noise there, but it was so loud. Now these two are my favorite. They, these are two professional actors um, that know Rocky. Loved you from the first moment I laid eyes, and I have to say you make for their. Now, I have to point out that David here, um, and I, actually Charlotte knows uh, Rocky, the the guy that I call Rude Man, which apparently he he he. He wasn't offended, but he just like rude man. Really, you can't come up with anything more, <laughs> more um, that was perfect. better than that. Rude so man was rude man, I, I, he was, yeah, I felt it when every right. time I saw this, you know, I cut it. I felt like he was rude. I, I, I love Rocky. So anyway, David here, brilliant actor. He has a bunch of different glasses that that have no lenses, and you just can't tell. You, you really can't tell. And so I, I just thought that was brilliant. I, originally, I was going to have him wear my glasses, but he already had these, which are also black, and, and they didn't have the lenses, which worked out perfectly. So the way you know we know, if you notice from the first time he shows up as you know the as the older daydreamer, the, it's it's there's there's nothing around him. It's just very plain. It's plain, right? It's very plain, and I it. you know it, it just. You empty know, and blank empty and, and blank right mm -hmm. and so now there's flowers 
there's more lights, there's pictures up, there's, there's, you know, dare I say, a woman's touch. Right, to that's what we this. had, and the blanket has color, and his other blanket. Right, was, exactly. The, that? Yeah. Yes, yes, which was your idea, which is brilliant. And then I wanted Charlotte to wear a red shirt, because when he saw you the first time, or saw your character the first time, uh, you were wearing a red sweater. Right. So I wanted her to wear that. And I wanted David to wear um, something very neutral uh-huh. tone. So, and and it was funny is most people gloss over the dialogue here, and, and they say, "Well, the first time you you know there's any dialogue is at the very end," which you know I know I'm spoiling the ending here, but we're going to get to it in a minute. But they gloss over this dialogue because it just fits so it fits so well it's so nice. well, and it's it's just you know. I, I know I'm patting myself on the back here, but and, and it was just their acting, I think, that oh, yeah. just they really absolutely. made this just so smooth and effortless. And this is the first time I ever worked with professional actors. And, and so, and it, oh, just, it was brilliant. Um, just, they were, they were just wonderful. Yes. So... Right there, that song, I, I was, I did get permission to use a song, and I was trying to figure out how to put this in. And in a previous edit, I put it where you were wearing the blue dress because mm-hmm. you know she dreams in blue. She's wearing a blue dress. Blah blah blah. Um, but it just, it didn't. The music didn't flow because. All the rest of the other music is more piano and strings with a heavy dominance in piano, which fit the mood. You know, piano, you can make it sound very dark, but you can also, with the same intru- uh, instrument, make it sound very light. And, and, and so it was easier to cut together the different songs when they're piano. So this one, I just, I loved it so much. Um, and the, uh, the songwriter gave me permission to, to use, I believe it's Josh Woodard, uh, which I have at the end. Um, but, uh, well, it's a beautiful I, song and we wanted it in there. And so we figured we had to figure out a place to put it and the end right. is perfect that it was, it's perfect. So, right. And so I used part of the instrument, the instrumental, and then I, found a good place right here to cut in the the vocals. And so right here, I wanted to show a change in the character, um, showing that he he's going to do it. He's going to talk with her, and he's obviously very nervous. That's why he's drumming on the table. He's sitting in her seat. Sitting in a, here's my awkward moment. There, right there, bam. And so he's sitting in her seat. He's He's going to talk with her. And it's not her. By the way, I'm really this awkward. I, I, I just, <laughs> just trying to make it seem like I'm cooler than I am. And so, I think, I don't know if we really planned to wear similar colors. But right that worked out. We didn't really plan that. I mean, I planned my outfits, but and, but you I, and you were progressively getting more, you know, bright. And then here's color. More color, right? And that's, but the colors are the purple and the purple. You know, that looks good together in that final scene. So. Right. And right here, we could we were not actually allowed to film in the bathroom at the the bar, mm-hmm. and so and it took me a while. This we filmed this like. What a month after yeah, filming yeah, in, in, in the bar, mm-hmm. and, and we I, this. right we so I came up with the idea. I had an extra um, small. It's actually a very short panel, like a th- like a three you know two and a half or three by four foot long piece of Wayne's coat and uh, Wayne's coating. I, I, I always feel like I'm saying that wrong, but anyway, so I I. I put that up there. Had to hold it up with the. Um, and this is our own C-stand. bathroom. This is our bathroom, right? And you came up with a brilliant idea of doing the employees must wash their hands before returning to work, and that's actually printed off the computer, and you put it on some kind on of backing. foam core. On foam core, yeah. On foam I just core mounted back. it on foam. But it looks like a. It looks like a legit 
plastic right yeah sign yeah. that you that was just just brilliant and you chose that you used to get that all set up and it was just very brilliantly done Right here, I, I, I wanted it to give the audience, you know, just kind of show that he's he's just kind of oblivious. Right here, like all none of this was rec what we had to dub over. We had to do the ADR, the automatic dialogue replacement, um, for this whole part right here. None of this was. Uh, able to be used. Um, the sit sitting in the seat, two different parts, and then sliding that across. And what I had to do right there, because I I wasn't paying attention when you were sliding that, and I was just recording it. And you're like, okay. wait, we need to go back and do that again, and do it with you sliding right. that right. and I was like well you know I'll previously just previously done that but, but it worked out it worked out because what I did was I I, I, I did the um, the rate stretch on right. Adobe so. Premiere and I shrunk it down to fit from from the beginning to the end of you moving that and it, it, yeah, worked, it worked great the, yeah. the seat I, I literally just slid my hand across our leather seat or leather mm -hmm. sofa mm -hmm. and then i did the, another part where i plopped in the seat and then a third part where i kind of turned mm -hmm. yeah. my butt in the seat and it kind of made a weird noise uh so i had to do it a few times where it didn't sound like i was gaseous um so I know this is awkward, you know, awkward, Mr. Awkward here, but I, I didn't want to give that. I don't want to take away from the story. So I had to do it <laughs> till it didn't sound like it was farting in the chair. Yeah. So anyway, um, and right here, originally I had the whole dialogue. Hi. So we re-recorded the audio. Um, and originally there was a whole dialogue right here that with cuts and everything. And it just... It was kind of out of place, and you know, feedback we got was that it was kind of jarring, and and so I was like, I was really, it broke my heart to have to cut out all that dialogue because I love the dialogue. You're never gonna know what I was saying unless you watched it, you know, the previous uh, cuts. But I just like, well, you know what? Why don't I just end it when they say hi? And then just go to the credits. And I think it worked great because yeah. it gives a little bit of a mystery, don't you think? Right. Oh, totally agree. Yeah, it's it's great. And so you see them talking and you know, hey, they're hitting it off. Right. So and so it's like, there's, <laughs> right, there's a little, there's enough closure to where this could end well, but enough mystery where I think it leaves you wanting more. Right. Now, I did something at the beginning and the end. If you look, pay attention. So every time it goes into the uh, dream, it does that. Nice. And so I, like I did at the beginning and the end to okay. just kind of give the, the question of, wait, is this all a dream or is right. it not? I think it's so, great. So thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your time. And uh, thank you for uh, watching this. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's, that's the a film. Wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>